I think it is safe to say that this is going to be one of those unique requests that I would get from Patreon. Now, this is the kind that this would be way far from the kind of media that I would normally go and actually review. Or the kind that's just something that nobody would really think about reviewing in the first place. Now, I know this is a weird request, yes, but hey, I'm up for the challenge. So, with that said, let's talk about Paige O'Hara. Born in 1956, Donna Paige Helmentoller, or as we know her best as Paige O'Hara, is best described as a woman of the arts. As both a painter and an actress of stage and screen, her artistic side is what fuels her passion to leave an unforgettable impact to her audience, rather it be with her artwork or with her performance in Broadway shows like Oklahoma. But her true crowning achievement, and what made audiences fell in love with her, is being the voice of Belle in the 1991 Disney masterpiece, Beauty and the Beast. A role that she holds so dear that for 20 years, she worked with Disney on numerous of occasions to help Belle go beyond the movie. While her voice did inevitably change with time and was replaced by Julie Nathanson, her contribution as Belle still rewarded her with being named a Disney legend, and she even got a chance to return to her beloved part for Ralph Breaks the Internet. Well, there's a lot to unpack here. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. steering wheel you sing of, that's a metaphor? Of course, that's just a short summary of who she is. As a Disney princess and a Broadway performer, it's no surprise that she would also have some very powerful singing skills. And with these skills, she would definitely have to go and fully take advantage of it outside of just on stage and in movies, like on the screen in general. Now, I guess we would have to go and add Singer on her list of occupations because that's exactly what she has done, where she decided to go and really highlight her singing skills with her own albums. Yes, this is going to be less of a review and more of a retrospective of the singing career of Paige O'Hara, where I'm going to be looking into each of her albums and some extras as well, where we see her do a singing performance. And I will go and add in a little bit of my personal commentary onto those little moments. However, there is a bit of a catch to this. As much as I would like to present some examples of what I'm going to be talking about, unfortunately, I can't because this is primarily on YouTube. And on YouTube, if you would put any song that is longer than five seconds, then your video can be at risk of being in serious trouble with a fraudulent copyright claim from big music companies. I think it is safe to say that I can speak for all YouTubers when I say any of these big companies! Okay. <sighs> Need to breathe a bit after that little thing. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and start things off with what we know her best. Let's begin with Beauty and the Beast. Let's be honest, what hasn't been said about the songs of this movie? The film itself is already one of Disney's greatest as it stands. But with the additional musical touch of Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, it goes even further with a list of unforgettable songs that contain such great power and holds that true spectacle feeling like it was meant for the stage, but elevated for animation. In that regard, it does make sense that they casted Paige for the role, since she was mainly a Broadway actress at the time capable of bringing out that gravitas in her voice for the musical numbers, while still retaining that sense of sweetness and charm that is a signature of the Disney princesses. Among all the songs in there, her standout performance has to be the reprisal of Belle. It's short, yes, but it's the one where she can have her great solo moment. What else can I say but... If she had to be known for one thing, at least as being a part of one of the greatest animated films ever made. However, by taking on the position of a beloved Disney princess, it also comes with a catch. And in the case of Belle, they are the sequels that are less than great, to put it nicely. And I'm talking about Belle's Magical World and The Enchanted Christmas. 
With Bell's Magical World, considering that it was originally meant to be a TV series, but later scrapped and then packaged the finished episodes into its own feature, the songs are meant to cap off some of these episodes with Bell singing the moral of the story, like Listen With Our Hearts is about apologizing, and A Little Thought is about seeing from someone else's perspective. They may try to be like the ones from the movie, but it's clear that not even Paige's execution can save them from sounding like they were made up on the spot. Like the movie itself, the songs had to sacrifice a lot of the original's quality in order to save money. And then there is the other Beauty and the Beast sequel, The Enchanted Christmas. In a way, it's a step forward from Magical World, but not by a lot. Again, there isn't a whole lot of songs, and the big one from all this that's repeated is As Long As There's Christmas. But for the songs they do have, they still sound like they just want to emulate the original style. I know there are a lot that are fond of this movie, including O'Hara herself, but for me, the songs fit more in the forgettable category. But there is one important thing to note regarding the soundtrack itself. On top of the songs from the album, this can technically count as Paige O'Hara's Christmas album, since it also features Belle singing several classic Christmas songs, from Oh Christmas Tree to We Wish You a Merry Christmas to Silent Night to many more holiday staples. Since singing is part of her career, I guess it's no surprise that even she can't leave her legacy without having one Christmas album. There have been a few other instances where she would play as Belle or do some Beauty and the Beast tunes like for Disney princess albums like the Christmas one, sing in Mickey's Magical Christmas, and of course, performing live for special occasions. But like I said, outside of playing Belle, she was once very prominent on the Broadway stage, and on several instances, plus some little extras as well, she would actually have those moments be recorded on a soundtrack. One of her first that was put into an album was back in 1987 with the double production of Of The I Sing and its sequel, Let Em Eat Cake. Performed at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, Paige is a lot more prominent on the former. However, you don't get to hear a whole lot from her, as it is one of those shows where it's quite uncommon that it's just one person taking center stage to sing. For the most part, it's often the chorus of guys singing the tunes that are mostly about the many ways to say that they love a girl. The next year, her next album would be recorded live on stage in London with the 1988 one-time production of Mac and Mabel, which the soundtrack itself stated that the proceeds for it would go to charity. Based on the true relationship of director Max Sennett and actress Mabel Normand, Paige was one of the three actresses that got to play Mabel and perform the songs Look What Happened to Mabel and When Mabel Comes in the Room. The best way to describe these songs are that they are classic Broadway, tap dancing show tunes that have a touch of vintage vaudeville that defines what is a literal song and dance number. Considering the setting of the turn of the century in the show, it makes sense to give the songs a classic style to immerse audiences into the time. And O'Hara's performance helps that as well with the right style of tone commonly found in those old songs that the old 1900 folks would swing to on the old gramophone. After that was Paige's first Broadway performance in Showboat, where she got to play the comedic role of Ellie. Now, when it comes to the album, this isn't your ordinary soundtrack featuring songs of the show. With Showboat, you get the whole show, and even more where they include the bits where they would most likely skip nowadays. Like uh, the opening scene regarding who works on the Mississippi. With that said, you don't just get O'Hara singing moments, you get her entire performance as one of the actresses in the showboat along with her husband Frank. Next up is the 1990 show of Sitting Pretty. Unlike Mac and Mabel, where it was set in the early 1900s, this is a show made in the early 1900s, 1924 to be precise, and the songs make that quite noticeable. The music sounds like it's blending the sophistication of opera with the showmanship and playfulness of vaudeville, and Paige's performance does reflect on the latter. But this is the kind of show where the actors require a lot in each other to bounce from one another to make the scenes work, and thankfully, Paige is able to do that to make herself equally as strong as the rest of the cast. But as a Broadway star who worked on many revivals, 
it wasn't surprising to find that she was also a part of a Rodgers and Hammerstein production, which in this case is South Pacific, which she performed during the Australian tour in 1995. When it comes to Paige's style of performance, she fits in perfectly with the playful side of Rodgers and Hammerstein, as the songs in this musical emphasize more on their signature talent of catchy compositions and strong wordplay from the lyrics. While there aren't many songs that do feature Paige as the lead singer, the ones that do have a good kick to them. But I will admit that it is true that most of these shows would be more familiar to just some of the elite Broadway fans. Would there be anything that Paige was featured that would be considered more mainstream, perhaps, to talk about? Well, there is one that you could hear, sort of. Back in 1995, there was a Broadway production of Les Miserables, where O'Hara was performing as Fantine. And yes, that means she had her starring moment singing I Dreamed a Dream. Although it is next to impossible to find a clear version of her Miserable moment, and the most that is available is just a small snippet that sounds like it was recorded from far away. It's too bad because from what I could hear, she really lets it all out to provide a wonderful performance. But finally, there is one more category of recorded music from Paige. We have covered the Beauty and the Beast stuff, we have covered all the stage productions that she was prominently in, but then there is everything else. If it doesn't fit in any of the Disney or Broadway stuff, then that's all going to be thrown into the miscellaneous pile. Let's begin with the album Loving You. Since she already did a performance of Mac and Mabel, this is like a best of album of the works of legendary Broadway composer and lyricist Jerry Herman. Other than Mac and Mabel, the album features songs from Hello Dolly, Dear World, Mame, La Cage aux Folles, and The Grand Tour. Jerry Herman himself best described this as not just a tribute album, but also a study of contrast that presents both her wide acting and singing range when performing these songs. And then there is this album, this one little gem that might interest many called Dream With Me, also known as Wish Upon a Star. This 1998 album features many familiar family favorite songs from well-known movies and stage shows like Somewhere Out There from An American Tale, Never Neverland from the Peter Pan musical, Count Your Blessings from White Christmas, Tomorrow from Annie, and yes, she does sing Beauty and the Beast. This is where she took advantage of her bell skills to make her own versions of these tunes that include a very warm and loving feeling almost like a motherly interpretation of these songs. There are even some compilations that combine several songs with a similar theme in one track, like the Rainbow Medley, where Paige sings a few popular rainbow songs like Somewhere Over the Rainbow, Look to the Rainbow, and The Rainbow Connection. But, at least for me, the one standout song of this soundtrack is When You Wish Upon a Star, where she even brought in Jody Benson to sing with her. So if you're ever curious of hearing a version of Disney's most iconic song done by Belle and Ariel, then consider this something you never knew you needed. But going back to her Broadway side, some stage enthusiasts may recognize that many of the plays I listed here are not just old, but antique shows like Showboat and Sitting Pretty. In a way, O'Hara does specialize in bringing back vintage stage productions to life, and that couldn't be more prominent in Sing Before Breakfast, Keep Your Undershirt On, and the two Jerome Kern albums, Early Kern, Broadway and Hollywood from 1907 to 1925, and London and Hollywood, with songs that feel straight out of a time capsule from the tunes of the century. Listening to these compared to the music from recent decades is honestly quite a unique experience, almost trippy for this 21st century guy. As for the rest, Paige did perform on several occasions to sing some other Disney songs as well, like You Got a Friend in Me with Robert Goulet, along with You Don't Bring Me Flowers, A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes alongside other Disney princess voices at the 2011 D23 Expo where she was honored as a Disney legend, and sang a deleted song from Disney's 1953 film Peter Pan called Neverland. But of course, it's also worth mentioning that Belle wasn't the only character she voiced and sang for an animated project. 
There was also Legend of the Candy Cane, where the lyrics could use a bit of work, but the songs themselves, especially O'Hara's, are surprisingly not bad and kind of sweet in a way. No pun intended. And then there's the 2002 special with the all-star voiceover cast that includes Paige, Jody Benson, Mark Hamill, Nancy Cartwright, and many more. Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa. Yep, uh, th th this is a thing, all right, and uh, it, it tries to be a musical. I, I, I just can't even. I think it's best to say that the less I talk about this, the better. So there you have it. That should pretty much cover all, if not most, of Paige O'Hara's recorded singing performances. And if there is one little takeaway from all this, the one thing that I have truly learned after listening to track after track after track of Paige O'Hara's vocal talents is that there is definitely a lot more to her than just being a Disney princess. While she is mostly remembered for her soft and caring approach as Belle that delivers a good feeling to the listener, Paige O'Hara is capable of delivering a wide variety of performances that could go beyond the typical innocent girl approach. Through both stage and screen, she knows the right combination of talent and characters so that we don't really see her singing, but that she's bringing a musical character to life, regardless of what genre of musical calls for it. If I have to make a recommendation of which of her albums are a must-listen, outside of Beauty and the Beast, of course, I'd say Dream With Me for the familiarity of both the songs and Paige's bell-like tone, and Loving You to get a good taste of her theatrical side where she delivers a variety of tone and learn about how broad her acting range can be. Like I said, this is a review that's completely different from what I usually do, so instead of giving any rating, I'll just say to go give some of the albums I talked about a listen. Some of them are available on YouTube, and some soundtracks are available on Amazon, if you're willing to buy. I'm sure there are many Belle fans out there, so it's worth a shot to hear that she could be a lot more than a provincial girl. Oh boy! Now that was an experience. Now, I know that this does seem like an unconventional review, or more, review, but then again, nobody has ever asked me before to do a review of the discography or singing career of an actress before. Can't say that I'm not an opportunist. See you later, dudes. <laughs>